Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Omar and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Nottingham. Today I'll be giving you my best tips to help you excel at medical school. Firstly, well done on making it. There will be timestamps in the description to help you navigate your way through this video. These are tips I wish I could go back in time to my very first day of medical school and implement as it would probably save me a lot of tears and anxiety. I will be posting an honest review on the highs and lows of my first year at medical school so be sure to tune in this Sunday to watch that. Lastly, best of luck starting your medical career. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel and share it with someone who you think might also find it helpful and be sure to follow my Instagram at imaraswasot to stay on top of even more um, university and lifestyle content. Let's get on with the video. At medical school, you will come across an overwhelming amount of information, whether it is a recommended textbook or rather various recommended textbooks or a overly enthusiastic lecturer, you will definitely feel this instinct to almost learn everything you see. This is definitely a trap I fell into. I remember learning about the mediastinum, which is basically a cavity in your thorax where your heart and all the great vessels are located inside. And I remember I found the introductory lecture really confusing, so I thought, well, I'm going to turn to my anatomy textbook. Seemed like a good idea at the time. This is when things took a turn for the worse, because then I saw thousands of words in front of me, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have never seen these words before, am I meant to know all of this? And then I began to write notes on every single page, which is basically the worst thing I could have done. The fact is, you're in no way expected to know or even learn a fraction of this information. You will only be tested on lecture material, so it is best that you only stick to revising and memorising this lecture content, which is what you will be tested on. I know this sounds like something a lazy or a bad student would do, but you have to realise right now your priority is not becoming a good doctor. Now that comes five or six years down the line. Right now, your priority is to make it to the next stage of medical school, which you'll only do by passing your exams. Additionally, your priority is to have a good solid foundation on what you've learned, not to be an expert. And don't worry, you will have more than enough lecture content to learn, which is why you don't want to add even more to an already full plate. If you have any doubts on what you need to know, be sure to find past papers so you're able to gauge the level of understanding you're expected to know. However, if, like the University of Nottingham Medical School, there aren't past papers available, um, we do get formatives every six weeks, which basically replicate what the final exam will be so you can gauge how much you need to know from the formatives and also there are always your seniors people in the year above um, that you can ask um, and feel free to email your lecturers Alongside an overwhelming amount of information, you will come across many small details which will probably be very time consuming to memorise all and will not come into any use um, until you're a practising doctor. Instead, it is better that you have a general understanding of the topics you've learned, so you have a solid foundation which you can build on as you go through your medical career, as you go through medical school, and as you go through your journey as a doctor. For example, we had a week where we learned all about heart failure. Now, after that week, I'm not an expert cardiologist, I can't um, diagnose and treat every single patient case you throw at me. However, what I can do is what any first year medical student should be expected to do, which is I can tell you the signs and symptoms, I can give you um, basic pathophysiology and I can tell you what drugs are in general used to treat someone um, suffering from heart failure. This means that as I go through medical school I can add to this already basic foundation with finer details and to have a thorough understanding following years of accumulated knowledge. This is a technique that has become extremely popular amongst medical students. You may have watched a video or two on it and I'll leave some links in the description of some good ones. However, essentially what it is, is studying a little over a long time. 
this is something that I didn't learn until I'd finished my first year. Having just come from finishing A-levels, the only way I knew how to revise was by making handwritten flashcards and doing loads of past people questions, which simply isn't feasible at medical school. You can implement active recall and spaced repetition by downloading Anki, an online flashcard software, and every week spending an hour or so inputting information onto it. Following this, you can spend an hour actually doing the flashcards you have just made. If you do this every week throughout your first year, by the time you get to exam season, you won't be left with hundreds of hours of lecture content that you have to revise because you'll already have been learning and reinforcing the lecture content throughout the year using this active recall and space repetition method. Personally, I didn't use Anki to make notes on everything. I only used it to make notes on anatomy and pharmacology, which are much more fact-based. Um, for the rest of medicine, I would make sure that my lecture notes were concise and I'd make a summar summary page, um, essentially summarising what we'd learned um, the previous week. This is perhaps one of the most dangerous things you can do at medical school. Not only will it impact your academic work, but also your social life and mental health. No matter how burdened you are with work, it is vital that you lead a diverse routine. It is important that you have a good social life, that you stick to a good sleep routine, have a good diet, and then keep up with sports, music, and your hobbies. This is because if you dedicate yourself to only studying, you will no longer be able to learn and absorb the information in front of you. You'll then naturally begin procrastinating because you're your body can simply not do the same activity for prolonged periods of time. You'll fall behind, you'll feel worse, and then you'll be trapped in this vicious cycle. What's best is that you say to yourself, look, I'm gonna study from nine to five, I'll take regular breaks. When I get home, I'll have dinner, then I'll see my friends or um, go to the gym or go to this particular society I'm interested in. This way, every time you come to study, you'll feel refreshed and motivated to be as productive and efficient as possible in that time. But not only this, but the other aspects of your life will continue to flourish, which will positively impact your mental and physical health, which are crucial for enabling you to work as productively as possible. Make sure to tune in on the 19th of September to the Uni of Nottingham Instagram page. I'll I'll put their tag here um, where I will be doing an Instagram takeover on how to prepare for the start of the new university term and how to get into a good routine. Although medical school is manageable, it takes a lot of hard work to continually be productive and demonstrate good time management skills. It can also be especially difficult to manage the stresses of medical school when you encounter extenuating circumstances, which will sadly happen to a lot of us throughout our medical journey. If you feel yourself becoming overwhelmed to the point you can no longer do something about it, it is so important that you pause and take a step back. There is no point working until you've had a mental breakdown or until you burn out because this can take weeks to recover from, at which point you'll be even more far behind and your health will be even more impacted as a result. This is why it's imperative that you ask for help, whether it's from your personal tutor or from your wellbeing team at university, or even from your GP. This will not only prevent your physical and mental health from deteriorating, but it stops your situation from manifesting into a crisis. And not only that, but it helps you get back to normal a lot sooner. Please remember, if you get any message from this video, is that nothing is more important than your mental health. So prioritize that over medical school over everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it gives you some sort of idea of how to overcome some of the challenges that you'll encounter from going to medical school, especially considering you'll have an increased workload and that you'll come into contact with a completely different learning style. Although I did focus on some of the negatives about going to medical school, please remember that medical school is one of the most incredible experiences you'll have in your life. It's an opportunity to meet people that will become your lifelong friends, maybe a lifelong partner, and also is the place where you start a career that you're truly passionate about. Not only that, but it's also the perfect opportunity to learn new hobbies, sports and music, as you'll have the facilities to do so. I wish you the best of luck starting medical school. Uh, please make sure to contact me on Instagram or via the comments if you have any questions about medical school, and I will see you in the next video.